Hi, Daniel with DanielParsonsMinistry.com from Copenhagen, Denmark. Uh, we've got a short message for you today, but I first wanted to give you a little panorama here. They use wind power because in Scandinavia, the wind is very strong. When you fly into Copenhagen, you'll experience that. Um, it's a little choppy. Uh, and then we're um, near Amager Strand, which is uh, a nice beach area. And so it's a beautiful day here, um, Copenhagen. Um, so my wife is making our dinner. And while she's doing that, um, today on the subway ride back from the church, we're Seventh-day Adventist Christians. We were having a discussion about uh, dependence on God uh, because in Denmark, um, it is a kingdom. But the taxes are very high, and uh, the people are assured of their um, their place to live. The government provides that, and their medical care, and their education. So it is a postmodern, uh, rather socialist uh, um, government. But I'm not here to talk about politics. I'm here to talk about um uh, what does God say about a man and what he wants us to do with our lives as far as um, what does the Bible say about depending on God and on work and not to get into any political uh, discussions, which uh, you can find that all over the internet, of course. So well, let's open with a little bit of prayer here, a word of prayer, and when we'll get right into what the Bible says. Father in heaven, thank you for this Sabbath day, the ability to go to worship uh, you and in a church, in a um, um, society that um, has a certain way of doing things. And uh, Lord, they feel here that this is what benefits their people and their country. And so I pray for the gospel message to go out uh, into this um country and the surrounding countries of Sweden and so I pray for the church ministries that are there um, and part of the uh, trans-European division and also um, part of the world church and so I pray for the gospel to go out and for the elders and deacons and deaconesses of all these churches to remain faithful to you Jesus and to share the three angels' messages of Revelation 14, that Jesus is coming soon, and we need to be um, in a relationship with him to be saved. And I pray this uh, message blesses other people. In Jesus' name, amen. So, um, we made some observation, my wife Patricia and I, that the transit system here is very efficient, it's very clean, um, we made some observations that there's very few homeless and the serious home, homeless problem in the country where my citizenship is in the United States of America. Um, so one could argue that, uh, you know, the socialist system that's set up here is, is more advanced and is taking care of the people better than uh, in the USA where we have a serious homeless problem. But let's look into what the Bible says. And I'm using a Holman Christian Standard Bible today. And so um, I'm going to uh, look up the first verse. And, um, and my wife Patricia wanted me to make sure that I shared that God looks at the effort. And of course, everybody is capable and has abilities at different levels. And so... Uh, I wanted to make sure I started off with that when I got into the scriptures. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read, it looks like there's around 10 or so scriptures that's getting to the heart of this message that I want to bring up today. And so Exodus 20 is our first one. And of course, this is part of the Ten Commandments. And to, today, um, we believe in the Bible Sabbath, which is the seventh day, which Biblically, that is Saturday. And um, so in Exodus 20, this is the Ten Commandments. And it's where um, God calls us 
to work six days and to be like um, him with that one day of rest. And so Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath also. So it's helpful to remember that. And so I'm pulling up Exodus 20 here. And so I'll be right with you there. Got a couple of pages that stuck together. This edition, this is my travel Bible because it is nice and light. And so Exodus 20. And I'll go here to the four, the verse 8 to remember to dedicate the Sabbath day. You are to labor six days and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You must not do any work. You, your son or daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the foreigner who is within your gate. For the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and everything in them in six days, and then he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and declared it holy. Okay, so God wants us in a relationship with him on the seventh day Sabbath. But the other six days, he does call us to work. The next scripture is 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 10. And so while I'm pulling that up, um, we know that um, we get uh, quite a satisfaction uh, from doing work uh, whenever you do a project and, and you have a nice outcome you tend to have a, um, a satisfaction from doing that. And so 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10, and this scripture here says, In fact, when we were with you, this is what we commanded you. If anyone isn't willing to work, he should not eat. And so Paul was a tent maker, and he's talking to the Thessalonians there. And so that's a very point and a blunt statement about if you're wanting to eat, you should work. So let's look now at 1 Timothy and chapter 5 and verse 8. And I'll pull that up for you here in this Bible here. 1 Timothy 5 verse 8. And the Bible says, Now if anyone does not provide for his own relatives, and especially for his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. And men, typically, uh, the traditional role is for the men to be the hunter-gatherers and go out and work and provide for their families. And so, now I want to go back to uh, the chapter of 1 Thessalonians and we want to look at uh, chapter 4 and verse 11 and see what the Bible says there. And one Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 11. And the Bible says, To seek to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. So, that's pretty uh, um, straightforward there also. Now the next verse, Ephesians chapter 4. Just turn back in your Bible a little ways to Ephesians chapter 4. I'm actually going to bookmark 1 Thessalonians 4 because I'm going to be back there in a minute. So Ephesians 4, and we're looking at verse 28. My other Bible is bigger and the pages turn much easier. Sorry for the delay. So Ephesians 4, verse 28, the thief... The thief must no longer steal. Instead, he must do honest work with his own hands so that he has something to share with anyone in need. And now we want to look at Genesis 2, verse 15. This is in the beginning of your Bible. And so, Genesis chapter 2 and verse 15. And the Bible says, The Lord God took the man and placed him in the Garden of Eden to work it and watch over it. And so all throughout humanity, God has desired that man be productive and not sit back and just receive. And um, 
you could argue that uh, some um, systems of um, of uh, socialism are, are what do you call it um, discouraging work, uh, and that obviously is not what God intends. Um, but then again, you need to have a social safety net for disabled people and people that cannot work. Or what if there's a serious economic crisis? Uh, you need to still provide for people because everyone needs to have shelter and needs to eat. So it, it's kind of like um, uh, like my wife is telling me, God blesses our effort. You know, when you try, God's going to provide for you. And so now we want to look at 1 Thessalonians 4 and uh, verse 12. And I've got that marked for you. So quickly, 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 12. So that you may walk properly in the presence of outsiders and not be dependent on anyone. So God does want us to be productive and provide for ourselves. Now let's look at what King Solomon, the wisest man to ever have lived, says in Proverbs 13 and verse 4. So we'll turn there. Proverbs 13 and verse 4. And close. The Bible says, The slacker craves, yet has nothing, but the diligent is fully satisfied. So right there, it's telling us that if we're lazy, we are going to be in want. Um, but the person that's diligent is fully satisfied. So like I was talking about earlier, our self-esteem is increased when we're going out and we're being productive. So now let's look at Proverbs 10 and verse 4. And the Bible says, Idle hands make one poor, but diligent hands bring riches. And so now we want to look at a couple of scriptures that deal with working for the Lord. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58, and when I became a born-again Christian, I didn't immediately want to go out and um, share what I found with other people. But over time, as I've developed my relationship with Jesus Christ, it's very important that I be able to share the good news gospel with other people because it helps me um, develop my faith and make my faith stronger. Because it's a real blessing when you see other people accepting the gospel and watch their life grow and mature. And it also takes us out of ourselves and out of our um, I have a, a tendency to be self-absorbed and, and, uh, and my ego can surface. So when I go out and share the gospel with other people, I'm not thinking about myself. I'm thinking about their salvation. So 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58, Therefore, my dear brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the Lord's work, knowing that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So when I do work... Maybe the person doesn't accept the Lord today, but we're planting seeds. And the Bible has the parable about um, sowing the seed. And so it's our job to just sow the seed. God does the rest. And I want to close up today with Ecclesiastes 2, verse 24. And we're back. Ecclesiastes was also uh, written by the Solomon. And so. In it, we have Ecclesiastes 2 and verse 24. And the Bible tells us, a second, I have to turn one more page. And I like reading it from the Bible itself, a physical copy. And so there is nothing better for man than to eat, drink, and to enjoy his work. I have seen that even this is from God's hand. So there's a clear message in the Bible that we are to work, that we should uh, depend on God and not on man, and to go out and not only work and provide for our families, but also go out and work 
and serve the Lord and share the gospel message because you will be fulfilled, my friend. God bless you. Please write to me at daniel at danielparsonsministry.com. Bye-bye.